Good morning, and welcome to Lesson 8 in our study of the Book of Romans. We are still in Paul's, uh, Paul's uh, declaration of the ruination of man and how mankind has fallen from God's favor. And so far he has covered why he thinks everyone should know there is a God because of their own conscience, because of the natural world around them, and then he has listed the sins, or some of the sins, that natural man is capable of doing. Then he went on to stop, talk about God's righteous judgment, God's ability and his righteous need to judge people who have committed such sins, even though they may or may not have recognized Christ as Savior, that he wants to look at the secrets of their heart. He wants to look at what they really feel, what their moral conscience has led them. And therefore that everyone has been guilty of sin and everyone is under God's righteous judgment. Now up to this point it would be assumed that he was talking primarily of Gentiles because the Jews felt they had a special place in God's heart, that they were God's chosen people. And some of this is backed up by scripture in a sense that they would feel such. In Exodus 19, 5 to 6 it says, Now therefore if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you still you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. They also said that uh, the uh, he who claims the word to Judah in Psalm 147, he statutes and he states judgment to Israel, he has not dealt thus with any nation. In Zechariah 8.23, it states, In those days, then men from every language of the nation shall, shall go up the, uh, the sleeve of a Jeru shall take the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, If let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So what he is what these people are saying is that the Jews do have some kind of a claim for God's special favor because God had chosen them as a special people. However, they took this to the extreme. And it says in the first part of verse 17, indeed you are called a Jew, and a Jew was considered to be a special it was a special honor to be considered a Jew. To be a Jew was considered to be a member of the tribe of Judah or of Benjamin, and it was a special honor. And he said, and you rest on the law and make your boast in God and know his will, approve the things that are excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. So what he is saying is that the Jewish people, being a special people, considering them a special people, and they had, they had a boast in God. Now, this, they actually boasted that they were better than others. They considered Gentiles to be nothing more than fodder for the, fuel, for the fires of hell. They considered themselves superior. Boasting actually in this, rather than considering it should be a humbling exercise to be somewhat, to be considered special by God. But they boasted in it. And they, even though they understood his will, they understood the knowledge of the law, they became so confident that because of this, because they knew the law, and because they understood, or they thought they understood God's will, that they then became a guide to everybody else. Now, the Bible says that they were to be a guide to the Gentiles, and they felt that they were such, a guide, a light to those who were in darkness, an instructor of those who were ignorant or foolish, a teacher of those who were children as far as spirituality was concerned. They had a form of knowledge and truth in the law, which, which was the truth. However, Paul goes on to, after this to state 
that you therefore who teach another, do you not teach yourself? In other words, they knew the law and they knew what the law meant, but they didn't apply it to themselves. Teach yourself. You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say you do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. In other words, the Jewish people knew the law and they understood it, but they did not keep it. This is the hypocrisy of the Jewish nation at the time, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. The Pharisees who would pray out loud, as it says in Matthew, and to give thanks that they are not like other men. God said, this is not right. God called the Pharisees sons of the devil, vipers, because they knew the law, but they didn't teach the law to themselves. They didn't follow the law. They didn't follow the meaning of the law, the instructions of the law, the purpose of the law. So he says, you were blind. You were supposed to lead the blind, but you were blind yourself. You were supposed not to steal, but you do steal. You take things that are not yours. You steal from God by not giving your tithes, by not giving your offerings to God. You steal. You say, do not steal, but yet you do steal. You honor, you say, do not, you abhor idols, but yet you make idols of other things yourself. So this is what he's saying here, that although the Jewish people were considered a special people, were considered a chosen people by God, and they knew what he wanted, they knew his laws, they knew his commandments, and they did not keep them themselves. This is what it says back in Exodus, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now, one of the things that they had with this covenant was circumcision. And all Jewish males were to be circumcised. And this was following the covenant which God had made with Abraham to be, it would, to be a recognition and an acknowledgement of God's covenant, covenant with Abraham. And they took circumcision as being very important. David, when he went up against the Philistines and Goliath, called them the uncircumcised Philistines. Again, this was a slur against the Gentile nation who were not circumcised. The Jewish people felt that this was a really important covenant to be circumcised in the foreskin because it was a commandment or an order of, by God to acknowledge the covenant with Abraham back in the book of Genesis. So Paul is coming against this. He says the circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. But if you are a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become the same as being not circumcised. You are the same as anybody else, a Gentile, who is not circumcised. And it has been shown before, if you, if you understand the book of Galatians, understand the need of the law, in reality, no one is able to keep the law. So therefore, it's like an uncircumcised person. If, you, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, if he did, Will he not, his uncircumcision, be counted as circumcision? If you go back to the book of Genesis, it was Abraham's faith that was counted to him for righteousness. And this is what Paul is saying here. He said before, in the first chapter, that the just must live by faith. And what he is saying here, that being circumcised is not any more important than being uncircumcised, it's how you treat the law and how you feel towards God that's important. If a non-circumcised person kept the law, he would be the same as someone who was circumcised. If a circumcised Jew did not keep the law, he would be the same as the uncircumcised Gentile. And will not 
the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who even with your written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law. So if a person who is not circumcised, so a Gentile, keeps the law, he then can judge the Jew who does not keep the law, is what he's saying. For is he not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh? But he is a Jew, he is a Jewish people, who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. Many of the Jewish people at that time delighted and wanted the praise of their fellows, fellow citizens, their fellow Pharisees, their fellow Jewish nation. That's why the Jewish man who said, when he went to pray in Matthew, he said, I thank that I am not like other men, that I follow the law. And yet he did not do that himself, as it was required. So what Paul is saying is that the outward appearance, the outward manifestations of religion, of circumcision, of baptism, of all of these manifestations which are outward expressions of faith are not the important thing. The important thing is to what's in your heart, what you truly believe, how you truly act, how you truly behave one to another, this is what is important. This is what signifies your true love of God and your true love with God. It says in the, in the 16th verse, Jesus Christ, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. This is what we're interested in, is the secrets. This is what God wants to know your heart. And circumcision is only an outward sign for the Jewish man of the covenant with God. In Luke 12, 56, he calls them hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but you do not discern the time. There are people who state one thing but do another. We're called hypocrites. He said, the Lord in Jeremiah in First Samuel, the Lord does not see as a man sees, for the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In Deuteronomy six five, it gives the actual utter finality of this, for it says, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength." So this is, this is what he's saying, that it is important to really be what you say you're going to be. If you are circumcised, according to the Jewish nation, it's important to follow the law under which the circumcision took place, had taken place. If you are Baptized, it's important to follow what the baptism really means and not just the act of baptism itself. The idea is that it's what's in your heart that counts. It's in your heart. And he was accusing the Jewish nation of being very much very religious on the exterior and very self-righteous, very inward, and very proud in the interior. And he's saying this not just to the Jewish nation of that day, but to everyone today as well. It applies to our churches, it applies to our, our activities, it applies to our, our relationship with each other and with God himself. He's not interested in, this, in what's called the outward appearances or what they call here the circumcision. As it said in Deuteronomy 10, 16, Therefore circumcise the foreskins of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. In Jeremiah 4, 4, it says, Circumcise your, your values to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. What he's saying is, take away 
from your heart those things that interfere with your relationship with God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So he is criticizing the Jewish nation. Those people who felt they were special and had a special relationship with God regardless of what they did, regardless of how they acted, regardless of what they thought, because they were of the Jewish nation. So he has criticized the Gentiles before, he's criticizing now the Jewish members, and this is written to the Jewish and to the Gentiles in the church in Rome, not to the generalized people. But he is making a point that if you're going to be, if you're going to be who you say you are, then you have to actually be who you say you are. You can't be knowledgeable but not do it. And you can't have an outward appearance of being religious and not actually being righteous in your own in your own soul. So he is criticizing the Jewish nation for these two things that they did not do what they preached, and therefore they were themselves blind, even though they were supposed to teach the blind. And he did not did not have the uh, idea, the true values of what they were preaching, although they had the external appearance, symbol of being righteous. So what so the end result is to be truthful, to follow God with your heart, with your soul, and with your mind. Be circumcised in your heart, as the Bible says. It's not what you do outwardly that's really important unless you inwardly feel and do the same thing. This is what Paul is teaching in this part of the book of Romans. Next week we'll get on to chapter 3, the first part of the third chapter, and continue with Paul's, uh, I guess, tirade against man's ruin in the face of God's wealth. I hope you'll join me next week for the first start of chapter 3. Thanks for joining me. See you then.